Hey folks, welcome back to AAA Farms. James here. Bright sunny day, middle of the day. I think it's about 11 o'clock on July 21st. And we got a new tool in the farm that's going to allow me to fix a couple of things I need to do and something I've been wanting to get and use for a couple of different things that we got going on. So let's see what we got. All right, it's so a new tool in the farm is the Bauer 20 volt heat gun. It's supposed to get up to 895 degrees. Still ain't open the box. Comes with a couple of attachments like a little deflector and then a, a concentrator. Uh, we're going to be using that concentrator today. Got the old reliable 5 amp hour battery. Uh, just to give you guys an idea, I don't remember what day it was, but let's see. You can try to get my finger out the way. See all three? So that's still fully charged. I have not charged these batteries since I bought my first Bauer equipment or Bauer tools, which was I think around December and it's July. So this thing's been holding charge for about seven months now. I'm not a, a contractor. I, I use these things as I need them. I don't just use them every single day. Keep that in mind, but it still has a full charge over I think a roughly seven month period. Pretty good. Other stuff we got, well, mainly just got this for the wire stripper portion. Got some uh, of these heat shrink and solder connections where you can just use them with a heat gun to connect the wires. Uh, this is a QJEC. This is just an Amazon brand. Bought these off Amazon. I think they were roughly $8 or something around that number. And then I went ahead and got some uh, heat shrink marine tubing assortment. Uh, this is about 8 bucks too. I bought that from Harbor Freight whenever I bought the heat gun. 5 amp hour battery I've been having for a while. So that's all we're going to be using today. We'll go ahead and get the box open. And if y'all can't tell, I got everything on the 96 one ton. Uh, essentially, I had a my connection going to my temp uh, for my uh, radiator. There we go. Uh, had broke. And so I put new wire on it and just kind of spliced it together and wrapped it with a little bit of electrical tape at the time. Uh, however, it suddenly came apart, which, you know, fully expected that. So now I got everything. I'm going to fix it the right way. So let's get this uh, Bauer gun out of the box. All right. Let's get this thing open. Let's see what all we have. Got our box, got our gun, it's pretty light, very light, which I mean I guess it doesn't have to be that heavy for what it does. Got our directions, then we got our concentrators, or I say the concentrator, our attachments, our different tips. Alright, so we got the deflector. Basically, the heat gun goes in here. I guess you could probably use this a couple of ways. If there was something behind what you were doing, trying to do, such as these connections, I think, yeah, it, it is slide on the end like that and just push it on. You could put your connector there. That way, your heat's getting to your connector, but nothing behind it. And then maybe there's a purpose where you wouldn't want full heat getting to what you're trying to do. I don't know. And then we'll uh, be using this one today. These just clip on pretty easy. Just click her on. I think no matter what, you have to press the black button on either side for it to come on. Turns out there's a little LED light there too if you need that for some reason. There you go. All right. So it gets pretty hot pretty quick. I saw how fast I moved my hand there. Uh, and that's about unbearable. <laughs> so, and then whenever you release off the trigger, I think it runs for like an additional 12 seconds to cool off. Which seems about right. They recommend, I think they use at least a three hour battery on this, amp hour battery. I also think they just put that on every single box. 
but for this case this is probably definitely one of the ones you want the bigger battery for uh, I got five amp hour just because that's the deal that was going on you buy a five amp hour battery and charger and you got the tool for free and so I did that twice so I actually have two chargers two five amp hour batteries and the tools I got at that time was the 3 8 impact which has been extremely nice and useful and the other one was the bit driver which has also been extremely nice and useful I've uh I used the bit driver yesterday my wife accidentally ran over the uh septic tank cap uh like a uh, clean out cap little pvc part and busted it couldn't get anything to grip it used a little bit driver to just put two screws in there so I could get a uh, a lever in there and, and get it turned uh, nothing crazy but I do use that bit driver probably more than everything and I really like it the 3 8 impact has been really nice on different things the last video was taking the trailer tire off it made that so much quicker than using a four-way and also being at the house and being able to use the tractor made that easy too but that's enough talking uh, not too much more to showcase on this thing by itself but we do got some work to do under the hood here, so let's get to that. Okay, we got the hood popped. So that sensor, trying to see. Okay, you can see the bare wire. This is going to the truck. That's the new sensor down there with the wire hanging out here. I had it just crimped regular together, I think. That's what it looks like anyways. What I'm going to try to do is pull this cable here off. And then I need to clean that up. You can see there's some crap on it, some corrosion and stuff. So I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit. Okay, then I'm probably going to shorten this cable because you can tell there is way too much there. And then we'll try to solder them together. It's going to be a, a rough spot to get to, but I think we can do it. I don't know how well I'm going to be the video, though. Y'all can tell it's pretty tight in there. All right. I got it. This one, I got all the corrosion trimmed off of it. Let's see, there, yeah, there we are. You can tell, much better end. And then I also got this end, which is the sensor end, trimmed up as well and ready to go. Uh, this is 16 gauge wire. It should be the blue ones, if I remember right. It's been a while, yeah. So it's the blue ones. There we go. Has this little indicator. So we'll take one of these. Away. And essentially we're gonna I'm gonna slide it over that sensor wire and then I'll kind of fray the two ends together, kind of splice it. Then I'll move this over it. I believe the process is to hit the blue ends first to kind of seal it up, and then you want to hit the solder and let it do its thing. So the solder should, I believe, be the last thing. I'm going to try to set y'all up to see this, but you can tell this is a very tight space. It's going to be very hard to do so. Okay, as you can tell down here, so what I did is I kind of just spliced those together by hand. I'm trying to get this to stop blurring, or that might be the sun. It's bright out. And then I slowly slid the sleeve back over it. The solder is sitting over the joint with the... the blue ends on each side of the wire so we're gonna uh, hit it with the heat gun now and see what happens got the concentrator in on see what we can do this is kind of a tough spot Checking pretty good so far. Like I said, still focusing on the plastic part of it. All right, now we're gonna focus on the solder.
Looks like our solder's starting to melt. Okay. Yep, I can see the solder melted. Looks like we got our two wires joined together. Looks like each end is closed. Probably not super bright to be touching this. I come from the top. That's a pretty good connection. I like how that turned out. Okay. So you can see it down there. It is kind of blurry. Just too much stuff in the camera's way, I think. But you can see the solder's melted. The ends are closed up together. It looks like a pretty good connection. So I guess one thing we can do now, I'm going to uh, pick up the tools, get them out of the way. We'll fire up the dually, and we'll see if our uh, temp gauge is working. I'm kind of storing all the feed for the steers in this dually right now. It's the only place I got that ain't, uh, that's waterproof. We'll wait to start. Y'all can tell there's our temp. It's raining cold right now because I just fired it up. I'll give it a couple of minutes and we'll see uh, where it moves to. Make sure it's moving. Uh, that looks like it's already moving. Yeah, slowly. Very, very slowly. I'm going to let it run for a little while and then we'll uh, just see where it gets to. Okay, it's been several minutes, long enough for me to do some weed eating. Uh, you can definitely tell our temp came up. This thing's always ran kind of cool. Uh, not to mention, I got max AC on blast to try to keep the camera cool, or cool the camera off anyway. Uh, so, it's definitely coming up, definitely working. So, as you can tell, it's kind of hot out right now. It's a kind of midday on a Sunday. Oh, it's nice and toasty. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, I absolutely love this little heat gun. Oh, where's she at? There she is. So, this little Bauer heat gun has been, uh, I mean, I know I just used it once, but I really like that I can do that now because that is by far, in my opinion, the best kind of connection. Uh, you got the other ones where you can just crimp them on and stuff, but this is going to give you a better watertight feel. Seal, not feel, seal. I did not do the, uh, what are these little tubings, assortment tubings, marine green, marine heat shrink tubings on this. Uh, just because I had that uh, wrap there, and so I just put that back around it, put a little bit of tape around that part of it. That's going to be fine. Uh, one of the next things I got to do is the old Yamaha Grizzly 700. It has some wires I got ate up by the dogs. That's probably going to be the next thing I use this on. And then there's a couple cables on my boat. Uh, really want to try to get, it, it's, it's a tough time right now, but I really would like to get my boat going just so I can at least take it out once this summer. Uh, that being said, I need a new starter and I got some other stuff that I need to do to it, but I got all that stuff and that's the, the worst part of the money. 
So I might try to buy a new starter relatively soon. Right now we're just uh, saving up money for hay because it is getting towards the end of July and we haven't got any hay yet. The uh, called two people, one guy a local that had $35, $35 bill hay. Uh, he had 25 rolls, so I was gonna buy all 25 of those. However, he did not respond to my, it's on Facebook Marketplace, he did not respond to my message, which I assume that they're sold. And then there was another guy I called who is probably like 10-ish minutes from here and he's doing $40 a bell roll, but he was out, but he did take my information down and he told me that he'd call me in probably a week or two and that he also wanted me to call him in a week or two because uh, he needs to cut hay now, but uh, we got a lot of rain in the forest gas. It was actually supposed to rain today, uh, but if y'all look at that beautiful sky, it definitely ain't raining right now. Definitely a gorgeous background there. It's one of the, the best things about living here is just the clouds, uh, especially, I remember when we first moved here, uh, when we first bought the land and we just got the house put here and this is before uh, our oldest son was born, I don't know, he was probably seven. Well, he, he's 17, 18, 7, so he's probably about 9 or 10 when we first moved here. Uh, and me and my wife, we would just come out and look at the sky at night and see all the, you could see all the different uh, constellations and all that. You could see the Big Dipper and the Small Dipper and a couple of the other ones. And it was just really, really nice because, I mean, when you walk out, there's a there's obviously the lights on the house that if you want to turn on, you can turn on. And then on the power pole over there, we got a light. And it's just... Uh, it's dark <laughs> when it's dark out here so anyway I'm rambling on but I got a few connections on the boat that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do and I'm gonna get that boat up and running hopefully before it cools off too much to take it out and go tubing or something uh, we got to go tubing last year I think for sure it was last year and uh, the boys absolutely ate that up we had some some boat problems but I need to get it running to address those problems I think it's just the throttle cable might uh might have stretched a little bit and so we just need to tighten that up anyway gonna be uh got another video i know i'm gonna do with the heat gun uh i got another video where i'm gonna get my uh kids folder up and running i'm probably gonna work on that next but other than that that's gonna be it for this video hope y'all enjoyed it this little bauer heat gun uh it's freaking awesome oh so with that little bit that i did let's see uh how much battery did we use? So it is still full charge. So, which we didn't use it a whole lot. I didn't cut any time out of when I was heat gunning it, so that's how long it took it to do it. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, there's a lot more cables on that four wheeler because the dogs chewed through like six of them. So, definitely a lot more work we'll be doing on that. And we'll see how long this battery lasts on that. I would assume the heat gun's going to use more battery juice than everything else just because it's a heat gun. But it worked great for what we did today. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this video. Bauer is still proving to be some pretty good stuff. If you're doing this for a profession, probably want to get something a little bit better. Not saying that this is by any means in the league of DeWalt or, or Milwaukee. But man, not everybody can afford two, three hundred dollar tools. So I can buy Bauer tools. It's going to do everything I need to do. For a much much affordable price range for someone in my shoes and i would argue that probably 90 percent of people who buy these kind of tools probably would be fine with a bower if you're doing it for a living probably want something more reliable i would assume the, uh, the milwaukee's and d waltz are probably more reliable it probably would outperform too would be my opinion uh, i haven't really did a comparison or anything matching somebody has so if you're doing it for a living stick with those if you're just like me a guy trying to build a farm or if you're just trying to do work around the house or if you're just trying to work on your hobby car or something like that try this right now it's worth it and worst case enough if you don't like it it's a very little money spent versus if you go buy dewalt and you get that one tool you could get probably six different buyers so anyway rambling y'all have a good one thank you for joining me on the farm today talk to y'all next time